Warning, the Stone Age Gamer includes a lot of bad language. Cover your mother ears. Good evening and welcome to the Stone Age Gamer Podcast. I am Chris Randazzo and mostly joining me tonight is exquisite dead guy, Dan Ryan. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to try to. There's no guarantee. <laughs> There's absolutely no guarantee. Dan's having. If you remember the bonus sequence at the end of a previous episode uh, where we just had crazy internet troubles, it's back. Hello, boys. I'm back. <laughs> I just watched it on Day. <laughs> anyway, our annual summer series is here, and Dan and I have chosen our first game, Avenging Spirit, for the Game Boy. Dress to possess because the Stone Age Gamer podcast uh-huh. starts now. <laughs> Hi everyone, this is episode 366. It's the week of July 9th, 2021. Dan, how are you doing? Dan's I mean, on a tape delay. Yeah, I'm, I'm on a tape delay. <laughs> Speaking, I feel like I, I said some shit a few weeks ago, and you and Evan just do this now because you can edit me more effectively. Because we're now a live show, apparently. Uh-huh. Is that what's happening? Am I on like a, a 10 second delay? So I don't say anything to to offend the rubes. I don't fucking know, man. I think um, it's to you know maintain scores for the sporting events. Oh, that too, that too. Yes. Um, no, nah, man. I'm doing. I'm doing all right. You know, I had a uh, a lovely Fourth uh, of July. Oh. Uh, went and uh, you know spent some time with uh, with friends that I hadn't seen in a very very long time, and everybody was all together and. You know, drinking beer and and hanging out and sharing food and you know, just like uh, like before in the before times. Hmm. So you know that was uh, that was lovely. And then um, I took uh, I took Katie Penny. So we were driving over to my my buddy Rob's house, and uh, I was like, "All right, girls, we're gonna be here for a little bit, and then we uh, we have to go home and get the dogs all liquored up." Uh, so that they don't freak out at the fireworks, right? Because Sarge doesn't really give too much of a shit. Uh, Willow couldn't care any less. And Bonnie goes and hides in a room. But Dozer, <laughs> oh, Dozer, he hates every noise. Every noise is like... he And his bark is like, holy fucking shit, my asshole is on fire. Please help me, dear God. This is the worst pain I've ever been in in my entire life. Why are you just sitting there not doing anything? I'm not kidding. This hurts. Please make it stop. That's what his bark is about literally everything. So the fireworks don't go very well for him. <laughs> so we, we had to go back and drug him. And as we're driving over to Rob's, I was like, when we leave, um, do you guys want to go see fireworks? Right? Like we... We, my town did them on Friday night, and then the town next to us did them on Saturday night, and then like two towns over was doing them Sunday night. And I was like, if I'm gonna go watch fire, I love fireworks, right? If I'm gonna go watch fireworks, I'm gonna watch them on the Fourth of July. Damn it, there's two days the fireworks are acceptable. So Fourth of July and New Year's Eve, and any other fucking time, if you're setting off fireworks, you're a dick, and you <laughs> shouldn't do it. <laughs> like I don't think they should sell them to people. It fuck. It drives me nuts. Unexpected fireworks are the worst thing in the world. But fireworks, when you are expecting them, are just a delight, just a wonderful time. So Katie was like, "Fuck yes, let's go see some fireworks." And Penny was like, "I don't know. I think I'm like I'm too old. I don't want to go see fireworks." I was like, "Are you sure? Because once I leave, I'm not coming back to get you." She was like, yeah, no, I don't want to go see fireworks. Okay. I was like, how much you want to make a bet that in about 20 minutes when I get to this location, I'm going to get a phone call. It's going to see if I can come back and get, get you. And uh, when I tell you that I can't, I'm going to be the asshole standing here with my phone out, not taking a video, but FaceTiming the fireworks show for you. And I did. I sat there with my phone out, FaceTiming the fireworks for my daughter. Because, of course, she changed her mind. Of course. Of course she did. So, other than that, though, 
Everything's coming up, Millhouse. How bad did I drop huh. during all of that? Was it terrible? Could you hear? Could you understand? I mean, I got it. It just all kind of, you know, it came in pieces. It came in waves. <laughs> That's is, so you know, fucking weird, man. We're I gonna don't make it. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll throw mine. I'll throw mine your way. Uh, we were supposed to go to uh, my sister-in-law's for the fourth, mm -hmm. and then John got himself quite the fever. Yeah, uh, he's been chilling at about a hundred and one ish oh, for the last shit. couple of days. So I sent Karen and Ellie to go without me and John. So I've been home uh, this whole time. So they, we were supposed to go on Friday. Uh, no, Saturday we were supposed to go. As soon as I finished, I guessed it on a a, a friend of mine's podcast, uh, Podflix and Chill. We talked about Sweet Tooth, and it was a lot of fun. Um, and as soon as we were, as soon as we were, I was done, we were going to hop in the car and go. But then John was like, not doing all right. And we, we took his temperature and like, oh, that's not cool. So they waited till morning just to see if John would snap out of it. And he most, most certainly didn't. He woke up in the morning and, you know, puked in the bathroom. So that was, that was a no go. So they went up, they went up without us. And, uh, me and John just sat and played video games all day except for like he took like a two hour nap which was awesome because you know good boy take a nap when you're sick uh, yeah so uh yeah that was that was all of yesterday was just him sitting on the couch wrapped in blankets you know playing some video games uh i'll go over the games i'll go over the games in a bit but uh but then it became nighttime and you were talking about how, how your dogs were handling and shit handling your shit uh naga did not like fireworks at all no uh, naga has a hard time with thunderstorms this was so much worse she i was i didn't know what to do she would not you know so Aww. here i am in this 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 situation like, all right well i've got the house to myself now john's asleep it's just me i have a lot of games i need to play like i got a lot to get through for uh like for work <laughs> and uh so i'm gonna get to work here but i couldn't I there was no period of time throughout the entire night where I had two hands available because at least one hand had to be trying to calm the dog down. Now, Naga, since she got here, oh, has never gotten up on the couch. Not like really? you're not like you're not allowed, just she has never expressed any interest in getting up on the couch. Like we've even tried to be like, "Hey, come on up. You can do it." And she just lays down on the ground. She like the floor is where she wants to be. Last night, she jumped up on the couch. She was shivering and just drooling everywhere and panting, her heart racing, oh. and it went on for hours because these fuckers didn't stop lighting fireworks in our neighborhood till 11.30. Yeah, see, that's unacceptable. That's unacceptable. She go was on the couch. She was across in my lap. She was hiding behind the chair. She got up into the window, which was really... I mean, it was... It was funny because, like, what are you doing up there? Like, she got up into the window and she's like, shit, I don't know where to go now. <laughs> she couldn't get back down. So I had to pick her up and take her out of the window. And then, like, an hour later, another firework went off and she went back behind the window. She's like, fuck. <laughs> like, dog, stop it. <laughs> There's nothing for you in the window. Um, so, yeah, there was, it, was, it, was a, it was a long night because even after it stopped, it took her at least an hour or so to calm down. Uh, oh, sure, sure. It was a, it was a rough day yesterday, man. It was, you know, dealing with sick boyo all day, and uh, which was mostly nice until it came to bedtime, and he was just so weak and sad and, and sick, and I was like, oh, my poor buddy. My poor boy. And I put him to bed. And, yeah, you know, tonight, that's awful. He, uh, today was just another another, another thing where we all just uh, kind of hung out and played, played video games all day. Uh, I had to borrow my mom's car to go grocery shopping because my wife has the only functioning car we have, so yeah that's neat uh and uh you know we we played a lot of games we finished metroid other m um which uh you know i i i think i summed up my feelings on that pretty well last time where it was uh there's a really good game in there it is it is almost really good a lot like we've went to the <laughs> hidden the hidden last boss most of the time it's awesome uh, yeah it's god it does so much stuff right and it's really fun to play uh but God, it just it just hammers you over the. It is a bunch of really cool meat wrapped up inside the dumbest burrito you've ever seen. It's I just don't even know how else to describe it. It is just out. God, 
I, I don't even know, man. It's the story, man, when it wraps up, because like we got to the I, I forgot how the, the game ended. Right. I thought there was more of a fight with. Mm hmm. <sighs> all right, all right. Just sorry, just got hit. With, I just got hit with another wave of stupid. MB is the last, technically the last boss. She was behind everything the whole time. This little girl who called herself Madeline Bergman, or they, they, they but the real Madeline Bergman was this was Melissa Bergman or MB because the scientists on the space station decided to create a new version of Mother Brain, but they did, but they couldn't call it Mother Brain, so they called it MB. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> no, that makes perfect you, sense. You can't call it Mother... Oh, we, we, we couldn't call it Mother Brain because Mother Brain was evil, so we called it MB. I'm still... What? All right, fine. And then she gave herself the name Melissa Bergman or something. I don't know. But she has these superpowers, right? She's this android that's got Mother Brain's telepathy. Oh, yeah, because guess what they invented for this game? Mother Brain controlled all the Metroids with telepathy. That's why all the Metroids were somehow still under control in the games that Mother Brain didn't exist in? Whatever. Uh, you know, playing fast and loose with the old cannon there, and it's not like Metroid's got complex cannon here, guys. There wasn't a lot to screw up, and they just kept beating it over the head, like, nah, we're just gonna make all kinds of shit up. It's gonna be great. <laughs> we'll just make it up and make it up and make it up, and nobody knows, and that's fine. Adam Malkovich kills himself for apparently no goddamn reason, because, you know, MB is still out there. And the last boss fight was this Queen Metroid fight, which is super cool, but I forgot that that was the last boss fight, because afterwards, you go, like, face off with MB, and she's, like, shows all of her superpowers, and she can fly, and she can control all the monsters in the entire spaceship, and she has super strength. And why did she do anything if she had the ability to do this the whole time? In fact, that scene starts with her pointing a gun at somebody. She's pointing a gun, and then, like, she drops the gun, and then uses her superpowers. Then why did you have the freaking gun? What? What? <laughs> game so stupid it's so cool but it's so stupid oh my god so you know that was neat we we fought the secret last boss fan tune and uh, you know went back and got adam's helmet and that was all a uh, good times great oldies and whatnot uh and is this dan back can you hear me there he is yeah okay sup sexy sorry i don't know what happened it was weird that's okay uh, so we finished We finished up with that. We didn't go back and get all the items, because I thought you had to do that to fight the secret last boss, but you don't. Uh, you just uh, <laughs> He just shows up. So, cool, I don't have to go through and find all the rest of the items, but man, using the screw attack in 3D like that is amazing. The speed booster works really well. Like, they just did so much good stuff and just pooped all over it. But uh, <laughs> So then we decided to jump right into Federation Force, which was mm. the last one, right? That's it. That's all mm -hmm. that's left. So I dug out my Circle Pad Pro XL and used that for the first time. Very uh, exciting. You know, how many games use the Circle Pad Pro? Uh, and I cracked open my brand new copy of uh, Federation Force for the first time. You hadn't opened it at all? Nope. Nope. Wow. Yeah. So uh, I loaded it up and we went through the training and John tagged the fuck out. <laughs> Like, he got super bored, super fast, and I was like, all right, well, let's try Blast Ball, right? That's kind of like a, it's kind of like a Rocket League, except with, you know, you shooting stuff, which seems, seems like a fun idea, and then, like, we played that, and even that, he was like, Daddy, can I play Rocket League? <laughs> <laughs> can I yeah. just not play this and play something better? Yeah, yeah, so he noped the fuck out of that, and, uh... So I asked him if he was if it was okay if I kept playing it without him because I know he's wanted to watch all the Metroid games. He's like, yeah, you can play that one without me. So late last night when I finally got into bed and the dog was like, you know, hiding under the bed for the most part, hiding her head under the bed, uh, and yeah. she no longer needed to be petted. Uh, I you know whipped out Federation Force and I tried playing through the first level and it's I just don't even know if I'm going to be able to make it through this. It's it's that it's, bad. No, it's not bad at all. It's just really mundane. It, there's nothing. There's mm. nothing special about it. No, I mean, uh, granted, I'm nowhere in this game, right? There could be sure. lots of cool stuff right around the corner, but thus far, 
there's just nothing special about it. I, you know, there hasn't been an ounce of music that I like. The art style is really kind of irking me. And you're not running around as the Federation dudes. You're running around as a Federation dude in a giant mech suit. So everything's really slow, which is like, I don't know, man. It's not That's a really odd choice for Metroid. Yeah, it doesn't feel anything like any Metroid game. It doesn't have anything to do with any Metroid games. It's just, it's a weird little title, and I'm gonna try my best to stick with it. But I, I just don't, I just don't know that I see myself finishing this. And I want to try it without the circle pad because the circle pad does give you dual analog control. So that's something. It is straight up dual analog control, but it's not the most comfortable thing to hold because, like. Holding it on its own and just using the two analog sticks isn't so bad, but then you right. need to use all four shoulder buttons to do various tasks, and that's not comfortable with the 3DS XL and this Circle Pad Pro XL with these weirdo buttons on it. It's uh, it's not a great setup, so I'm going to try it without the Circle Pad Pro and see if I can tolerate that more, because yeah. right now I just kind of felt like I was fumbling over myself a lot uh, to play this one. And that wasn't, it just wasn't a, wasn't a great setup. So yeah, Federation force not feeling it now. Granted, I also know that I'm not playing this the way it was intended, right? This sure. is supposed to be for uh, your multiplayer. And I had a couple people online be like, Hey, if you want to play this online together, then, you know, I'm, I'm game and that would be cool, but I would have to like schedule time to do that. You know, right. I, I can't, I don't know when I'm going to have time to play. And even then I don't know how long I'm going to have time to play for. I could just be 15 minutes or something. And I don't want to try to get together a, a, a voice chat group online or something to play this game for 15 minutes. That just doesn't seem like it's, it's going to work out for any parties involved. So I don't know. It just doesn't seem really worth it. Right. At that point. It doesn't. And maybe it is because I do like, it's the last one. It's the only Metroid game I've never finished and I've, yeah. I've barely touched at this point. So eh, I don't know. It's a thing. Uh, so let's see. What did we do today? We uh, Today we started uh, Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga. Since we were okay. done with Metroid, he didn't really want to go back to New Super Mario Brothers Wii. So he was like, I want to play, I want to play the new Paper Mario game. And I was like, that seems like a bit too much of an undertaking for me mentally right now. <laughs> and he's like, Daddy well, is just not ready. Then let me try Mario and Luigi. He's like, all right, then let's do that. Which is, I think, just as much of an undertaking as Paper Mario, um, whatever the heck. Uh, uh, what's the new one? Uh, Jesus. Origami King. There Origami King, right? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I started Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga for kind of the first time. I'd played the this the intro of it once a long time ago, but I've never really put effort into it before so i'm playing it on the wii u virtual console and it's pretty neat it's got a lot of it's got a lot of musical similarities to super mario rpg so far it's fun it's not uh, i'm not blown away yet but the writing's great and uh the weird little you know gobbledygook they speak in is hysterical mm -hmm. like have you played this one uh no no like and they, you do know how much I love weird little gobbledygook speak. That is, I mean, just you're selling me now. No, no, no. It's not. It's not like Animal Crossing. They speak like Italian gobbledygook. Like every time uh -oh. Mario or Luigi speaks to somebody, they're going like like they're coming up with Italian gibberish. Oh, so it's like it's like that episode of Family Guy. Peter goes into the Italian place. Yeah, it's like that. Bobby. That's exactly it. And they just that is at... super offensive. Yeah, it's 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 kind of out there, but <laughs> yeah, boy, does it, yeah, it is. It cracks me up every time. It's <laughs> it sounds hilarious because <laughs> nobody else does that. There's no other you know weirdo noises or something in the game, as far as I know. I mean, like sometimes something will laugh, you know, when the text sure. bubble is going on. But since Mario and Luigi don't actually speak. Maybe Luigi speaks. I can't remember. Everybody speaks to them, and, like, nobody knows who Luigi is. Everyone's like, Mario and green not Mario guy. Come over here. Oh, green not Mario guy. <laughs> it's pretty funny. That's so, not nice at all. I'm enjoying it. It's uh, it's cool. Though, like, you know, we started playing it, and then I went upstairs, and I put on some music to, to when I was cleaning up Ellie's room, and... uh a Chrono Trigger song came on. I was like, I should have pushed for Chrono Trigger. 
<laughs> I've been itching to play that game for years. It's been like a couple of years since I've properly played that game, and I am so ready to play that. But we'll get through Mario and Luigi first and see where the day takes us. Uh, so, yeah, Crash Bandicoot is on hold uh, because I got a couple of reviews for Nintendo Force. I am reviewing the Ninja Gaiden, Gaiden trilogy. I'm trying, still on the first one, Ninja Gaiden Sigma. I started over on easy mode because, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I beat no. this once on normal mode on the original Xbox, and I started getting my ass kicked like on the second stage. And I was like, you know what? I don't have. I I literally don't have time for this. I have. I think my deadline's like the twenty fifth. I have twenty days to get through all three Ninja Gaiden games. Yeah, now easy baby mode. mode man. Sign me up. <laughs> I just just need to get the basics done here. Uh, but yeah, I, th- I think I mentioned last week how crazy it is to see how much of Ninja Gaiden's DNA was in Other M. Yeah. Like, that's just, just nuts. But on its own, like, the game's definitely aged a bit. There's, like, a couple of things about the way the camera moves around that, like, it never, I never noticed it the first time. Like, I don't remember those issues being in place, but now that I'm playing it, I'm like, yeah, no, I do remember this. This is just what games were like back then, because this mm-hmm. was such a revolutionary thing, you know? This kind of laid the groundwork. Was this before or after Devil May Cry? I can't remember. I think it was... I'm 99.9% sure it was after. Let's see. Ninja Gaiden for Xbox was 2004. I think Devil May Cry was like 2001, 2002. Devil May Cry... Wikipedia. Maybe 2000. 2001, yeah. Yeah. So Devil May Cry really did kind of... That was the one that set the real groundwork for this kind of stuff. Yeah. So I thought there was something nine eleven in Devil May Cry, like something with the twin towers or something in the game. I don't remember. I there was something about that. Huh. I don't remember that at all. Yeah. I remember really liking Devil May Cry. That was a fun game. No, that game rules. So I mean, Ninja Gaiden I've always had a, a a weird relationship with because I love Ninja Gaiden on NES. And I love Ninja Gaiden 2 on NES, and I tolerate Ninja Gaiden 3 on NES at best. <laughs> but the new Ninja Gaiden, it's a really cool game. It's it's actually quite good, but it has nothing to do with Ninja Gaiden on NES. No. Like it's absolutely it's, not. The main character's name is Ryu, and he has like the dragon sword, and that's pretty much it. There's no nothing at all. And that, there's no tether to it. That's always kind of bugged me that like, well, why did you call this Ninja Gaiden? Like you could have called this anything. This 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 has nothing to do with Ninja Gaiden. But, you know, then again, NES Ninja Gaiden had nothing to do with the arcade Ninja Gaiden. So, I mean, maybe it's sure. keeping in tradition. Sure. But it's uh, you know, it's it's neat. It's certainly a cool game. There's a lot of blood. It updated today. I can't wait to find out why. We were playing <laughs> we were playing Smash Brothers today because so uh, uh, one of John's favorite things is to, you know, let the computer play Smash Brothers. Like, so we'll be eating something. Like, we had a snack earlier today, and yeah. and John was like, let's take turns setting up matches. And so we'd let Smash Brothers, you know, put eight computer players up to level nine and watch them fight it out. and you know, Just see what happens. Exactly. So uh, we, did some, we did some pretty fun matches today. My favorite match was I had um, uh, third-party companies compete against each other in teams. <laughs> so I did uh, Konami, represented by Simon Belmont and uh, Solid Snake, versus um, uh, Sega, which was um, Joker from Persona, because Sega does Atlas, I think, uh, and Sonic, obviously. Yeah, close uh, enough. Versus Capcom, which was Ryu and Mega Man, versus Namco, which was Pac-Man and Kazuya. Nice. Pac-Man and Kazuya tore it up. <laughs> did they? <laughs> yeah. They, uh... They took it home. No, we we love doing that stuff. But while we were doing that, this little thing is like Ninja Gaiden update. Is like, mm-hmm. I wonder what that's about. Hmm. I like speaking I like of update. Ninja Gaiden. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking I, of Ninja Gaiden, huh? <laughs> so I was I was dicking around on the internet as I do, mm-hmm. and uh, I came across an image that looked like somebody had modded parts of Ninja Gaiden, the original NES Ninja Gaiden to include Deadpool. And I was like, I'm going to need some more information about that, because that seems like a really, really good idea. And uh, indeed, somebody has hacked the original Ninja Gaiden and taken out everything that was Ninja Gaiden and replaced it with Deadpool shit and given him 
selectable um, sub items and the ability to crawl up walls and it's fucking awesome. It is just a 2D <laughs> like I mean it, it the guts of it obviously because it is it's a hacked game so the guts of it are the original NES Ninja Gaiden but everything else is Deadpool and it's got a new script and cutscenes and abilities and enemies and like you fucking slicing down Batman and whatnot as you're going through it and it's really awesome and like I was just I finished up Avenging Spirit this afternoon and I was like I'm going to try and get this to work and it was a pain in the ass to get it to work because I had I it's been a long time since I've loaded a game that was you know like a hacked game or whatever so I was like I don't even remember how to fucking do this I had to go back and remember how to download the file and then do the IPS file because this one runs on a disk system emulator. It's like, oh my god, whatever. I just want to play this game. So it took me like 20 minutes of being an old man yelling at clouds um, <laughs> before I could get it to work. But then I got it to work and it plays really, really well. I was really impressed with it. Nice. Yeah, it's on um, romhacking.net. I see. Yeah, I saw. Um, I, I saw that you posted this earlier, and then I looked it up on YouTube and I watched a video of. It. It's like, oh, like the levels aren't even the same. It's just no, it's they're using totally some different. assets, but it's like a whole different thing. That's, that's pretty, pretty snazzy. Yeah, it's like it, it is a completely like, it is not really a hack. It's just a different game. Yeah, I was really impressed by it. It looks looks pretty neat. I only I got to watch it in mute, so I, I want to hear the music, but. No, so, the music is good. It's got a, uh, a, a fucking chiptune version of X gonna give it to you. <laughs> which is really awesome. That yeah, awesome. big fan. Cool. Uh, yeah, Arcade Cabinet has been also, um, you know, filling me up with some joy. I've been filling up my favorites list, which is fun. I played the best game of Paperboy I've ever played. Now, I <laughs> love, love Arcade Paperboy. I love it to death. But it's I great. Am awful at it. I just I don't think I've ever gotten past Wednesday on Easy Street in my entire life. <laughs> I made it to Thursday the other day. I was like, I made it all the way to Thursday. This is crazy. I also played through a bunch of the arcade version of UN Squadron, which I had never played before. That was awesome. I can't yeah. wait to finish that. I just I literally I ran out of time. John wanted to sure. do something, and I was like, all right, well, he's sick. I gotta stop. I can't really pause this, so you know, whatever. I'll it does have save again. states. Yeah, but I don't know how to use them yet, and I was wasn't about to try to figure that out. And That's I fair. Cer certainly don't mind. Uh, Certainly don't mind yeah, kicking oh, that one from the beginning again. That, oh that's, no, I have to play UN Squadron more. No, you know it's it's um, it's definitely. I had heard that the Super Nintendo version was better, and I I heartily agree with it. Um, you know, there are certain things like certain animations and stuff that are uh, better in the arcade version. Sure, uh, but overall, like the Super Nintendo, Super Nintendo version did that thing that was a. Uh, Oh, sorry, I just I just scrolled by something terrible that you need to see, but I'll throw that in the chat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the arcade version is like super linear, like it's just like yeah. this stage and then this stage and then this stage. The Super Nintendo one has that whole map where like you get to choose the ship and you you decide like what weapons you're gonna get from this whole menu of things that each ship can carry, and then you choose which area you're gonna go to while everything's like moving in on your base. You have to play the stages that are getting like the, the the ships and stuff that are getting closer to your base to protect your base. Like it's and and the music's better, which is which is, you know, kinda crazy. Not to say that the music in the arcade version is bad, it kicks ass, but the right. Super Nintendo game just freaking Capcom blew this away. Just it's, UN Squadron's so freaking good, man. And even the arcade version's great. But, you know, it's, it's also nice to have the ability to do the whole infinite continues things. I'll just keep throwing fake quarters in there, and uh, that's uh, that that's infinite continues for that right there. And you don't have that on Super NES, like, because it's, right. you know, fixed up for a console. But, yeah, I threw something really lovely in the... Uh, in the I saw, I, I've seen that. It's yeah. very funny. Yeah, it's uh, just caught me off guard when I was <laughs> scrolling through, like, oh, 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 oh. Oh, that's not cool. Uh, anyways, um, yeah, that's been that's been what I've been up to, and you know, uh, oh right, with the arcade cabinet, that was the other thing. I uh, we fixed the basement. We figured it out. We got new bookshelves. 
and other shelves, cleared out a bunch of old toys that the kids don't play with anymore, got them all built, cabinets in the corner, uh, everything everything works. It's all wonderful. Awesome. So it's got a it's got a forever home. It's all nice and pretty there in the corner. You know, now it's just all a matter of figuring other stuff out and figuring out our ridiculous bathroom situation, which is uh oh that that was my week last week. We finally got a contractor to come out and look at the bathroom and uh it's And they were not happy? No, they they were not they were not pleased with uh, what they <laughs> saw. Uh they were not pleased with what we had already bought. Uh, and the person who told us to go and buy these things uh, was not pleased with uh, the reality of it. <laughs> mm. That sounds a, super fun. Yeah, there's this. We we trusted this person implicitly, and there's a certain degree of uh, uh, it'll be fine. We'll figure it out uh, when discussing these plans. And right. Typically speaking, if we're going to talk about, you know, redoing a bathroom and spending, you know, a couple thousand dollars, we'll sure. figure it out isn't one of the things that makes me sleep well at night. But it tr- shouldn't be. We trust this person completely. This is right. what they do for a living is doing these designs. Uh, mm. So the, when the first contractor came out months ago and he looked at all this stuff, just like, yeah, I don't know about this, this plan. I, I don't know about this. This uh, this doesn't seem like a good plan. Uh, it also doesn't seem like it's it, it doesn't seem like it's going to fit within your budget. Uh, it is but you know indeed what? a plan. It is a plan. I will give it that. So these this new contractor we had these are friends of ours, people we know. So I know right. they're not dicking around with us. Right. Um, they looked at it and said, "All right, so so here's the deal with this plan. The way this works right here is that." Um, this comes down to literally the millimeter, like the door swing. If it's so much as a centimeter off, the door is going to hit the the vanity and you're not going to be able to open your bathroom door. Right. And like a half a centimeter, it's still going to hit. And that's no contractor is going to want to work within those limitations. No, God, like, no. I mean, just from like a house settling and it, I the tiniest, you know, fucking Ian Malcolm uh, chaos theory. Right. Like it's not going to be perfect. I mean, the t- one one tile could have an extra glob of grout behind it, and that's enough to to throw the whole thing, throw th- throw the whole thing off. So that alone was like, yeah, that's a that makes us a little uncomfortable. But you know, it's not not doable. Uh, but the other one was the plumbing. Like we were told, right. we were told, quote, it won't be that much to uh. Uh, swap the toilet and the tub because the you know the plumbing's already there. Well. Pipes are already there, but not the exact kind of plumbing is already there, which is what we right. learned when the contractor looked at it and said, you're looking at a difference of a couple thousand dollars, like a couple grand. Like this was all just, you know, he hadn't done any paperwork or anything, just letting me know. And yeah, a couple of grand, that's that's not not much. <laughs> that's not not that much. Uh, no, it, like, I mean, if you're things. if you're redoing a house right from top to bottom. What's two more grand in the bathroom? Mm-hmm. But when you're just doing the bathroom, a couple of grand is everything. Yeah, when I got actual quotes, yeah, the the couple of grand was more like six. <laughs> like, yeah, it's a it's a lot, dude. That shit just piles up, man. It's it, crazy. It does. I and hate the re- it. The response from the person who helped us with the planning was super defensive. Like, well, you know, we discussed all this stuff ahead of time. None of this should come as a surprise. Like, you spoke in all these vague terms. Uh, so, yeah, a $6,000 difference does come as a bit of, bit of a surprise. Did you have a bit of a shock? I didn't know about because... Uh, that I didn't know that your plan involved, you know, measuring down to the millimeter and contractors won't want to work with that. I did not know that does come as a bit of a surprise. So uh, it was, it's been a stressful week figuring I all mean, this out. Cause if, if we're being honest, when, when your cabinet was getting cut out, there were a couple of sections where I was like, I'm going to go wide here and then we'll like sand this down a good inch or inch and a half. Because I don't know that I can make that cut confidently. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, uh-huh. And I'm talking like half an inch to an inch of leeway I gave myself. A millimeter? You can get fucked, dude. That's ridiculous. That's that, That's nuts. 
that so, it's just not it's just not po- like no contractor is perfect right they're still they're still human mm-hmm. it's it you're not going to be to the exact millimeter every single time. You know, shit, you buy IKEA furniture and sometimes that shit's wobbly. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that was that was made by a Swedish robot and they have the best <laughs> robots. But that's the uh that's the thing, man. Uh Oof. We also we bought the other part of it is like, well, yeah, this is going to cost this much, but we also already bought so much. We bought everything to go in the bathroom. And the right. most expensive bits of that are not really refundable. So either way, we are completely dis- just demolishing our initial uh, budget for this. And yeah. yeah, it was a we we probably did not go about starting this the right way. <laughs> uh, not sure. Uh, I will not be. I will not be doing any more home improvement planning with uh with the this uh with this particular person going forward. Nah, man. You just you just you just can't buy shit. Like, and I know it's easy to say that now. You just can't buy shit before you before you like have an actual like somebody who knows what they're talking about. You know. And that's the thing. We were. We were fairly certain that we had somebody who knew what they were talking about. And, you know, what it seems to be is more that what they're talking about is, well, they're a designer. So what they do is they come up with a design and then they kind of just browbeat people into doing it for them. Like, right. Okay, but you're going to do this because we're paying you to do it. And, well, maybe there's a reason that the contractor doesn't want to do it that way. Right. Just maybe there is maybe maybe it's not just because they don't feel like it or because they could do it more expensive another way maybe the reason is this may not work or this may not hold up after a long time but or this may be measured to a millimeter yeah which is uh bananas now you know granted uh there's uh there's there's possible ways around this. I don't know we we may have come to a conclusion here, but it's been an incredibly stressful week, and I know how much everybody likes listening to us talk about home improvement projects. So I figured I'd bring it up. But it's just the worst thing in the world, man. It's worse than standing in line at the post office because it's just shit that I I have a hard time with it personally because I have to turn it over to somebody else mm-hmm. because. Like, we're going to redo our bathroom um, when my father-in-law comes up. And I'm like, I took on a little bit of a side job to, like, make some extra money to do that just because I didn't want it to cut into the regular budget. I was like, all right, well, I can do this other thing over here for a little bit, make the money for the bathroom, and have, like, some extra money left over to, like, go buy a box of baseball cards. So, you know, I'm doing that. And then my father-in-law is coming up. And we're going to redo the bathroom. And when I say we're going to redo our bathroom, I mean we're going to take out our tub and we're going to redo the floor that's under the tub. And then we're going to put a new tub in. That's it. That's some shit I can handle. You know what I mean? Mm. I, I can put the fucking bath fitter, plastic, like whatever, over top of the existing tub because it's just what's there now is like one of those tub surround kind of deal. Gotcha. I can do that. You know what I mean? I've done it before. Like, I I know that I can physically do that. Moving pipes and shit, and like, well, my toilet's over here, and I want the tub over it. Like, nope, no, no. That, a real man needs to come do that. And when I have to involve real men in my life, I get upset. Because (laughs) I don't know what I'm doing, and I hate that. I hate that, because I can't do anything about it. You know? terrible well i i don't mind uh giving up control to other people who know more than me uh i do that a lot but uh yeah yeah this whole situation's been a thing and it seems to be heading toward a conclusion that might involve that is it looks like we're going to kind of be forced to move forward with the original plan and right it's it's gonna be a lot of hoping for the best and we're gonna be uh paying it off for a very, 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 very long time, uh, yeah. which was not the original plan. But at this point, we have to deal with what we have. And uh, 
what we have is potentially a rather nice bathroom. Well, that's something. <laughs> yeah, that's something. A pretty place to take a shit. I mean, that... It's all a man wants. A bathtub big enough for my wife to take a bath in. I Can both of you take a bath at least? Like, at the same time? I know we're getting a little personal, but... I don't know. Maybe? I hadn't really Maybe. thought about it. Right. I don't really mess with baths. They gross I don't out. either, but, like, <laughs> the option is nice, right? Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Like, it, it has come up once or twice in this house, and I was like, this this tub... I. I is this tub does not hold an adult human <laughs> it's mm. uh it just doesn't yeah um so uh it, kinda... it holds like a 1940s adult human yeah with with, with gout when, like or... when like five Holy six no. was tall yeah <laughs> it's great for the kids they fit in it just fine but like i try sure. to like sit down and like i gotta curl my legs up <laughs> to try to like <laughs> lay down in the tub it just it just doesn't work so I'm going to go get in the fetal position in the tub, because that's the only way I can be. Yeah. So, you know, hopefully having a nice, uh, larger tub will improve our lives in some way, shape, or form. I am I am confident that it might. <laughs> I'm not confident that it will. I'm confident that the possibility is there. It's... <laughs> I'm confident that the possibility <laughs> is there. I, If it makes you feel any better, Chris. If it makes you feel any better. I pulled my second Mike Trout today in the show, so... <laughs> that I mean, does make me feel better. I hope it does, <laughs> because I bought a lot of packs to get <laughs> the second Mike Trout. And not I didn't spend any real money. See, here's the thing. they The show was doing uh, up until tomorrow. It's still going on. So when people listen to this, it'll already be three days too late. Um, all of the packs have been uh, 50% off. So you could get a 50-pack of cards and one Ballin' is a Habit pack for 37,500 stubs. Okay? Now, when I started this endeavor last Friday, I had almost 200,000 stubs just from like selling cards and flipping cards and playing the market and doing that sort of thing because that's a whole other aspect of this game that I was not prepared for this year is like, I got a fucking like stock trade. This is weird. Anyway, so I had about 200,000 stubs and right now I am down to 600 stubs. But at the end of the like 1,000 packs of cards that I opened, I pulled Mike Trout again. And when I sell that card in like a week or so, it's going to put me back up around 550,000 stubs or so. So ultimately, I don't know that I made any money or any stubs off of it, but I certainly had fun and like flipped a bunch of shit and and like it it's weird, man. The odds are not in your favor is what I've learned. It was a waste of stubs for the most part but an enjoyable one. And I got a second Mike Trout. So, you hey. You never have too many Trout. Um, In this game, no. No, you cannot. <laughs> a third would be just... Mm, just <laughs> wonderful. The but, Trout um, Trinity. <laughs> the Trout Trinity. I also finished the... Uh, they've been doing a really cool event uh, this past week called the Switch It Up event, where your entire lineup has to be Switch hitters. Um... And then you can only have gold and silver pitchers, and the stadium is locked at the polo grounds. Now, wait I don't second. know if you know anything about wait the polo second. grounds. A switch hitter is somebody who can bat left or right. Yes. Yes! yes. I Look at you. Do you know anything about the polo grounds? Uh, uh, is polo involved? Uh, it was at one point. And then, when baseball started becoming a thing... A lot of the New York teams needed a place to play. The polo grounds became a place for them to play, but they couldn't fuck up the polo field. They couldn't, like, alter the stadium, right? So the polo grounds back in, like, I think it was, like, the teens and the 20s, honestly. It might have gone into the 30s. I don't know the exact history on it. But the dimensions of the polo grounds were ridiculous, okay? Now, most modern baseball stadiums 
from home plate to dead center field, like the furthest part of the park, is like 418 to like 425, give or take, feet, right? Pretty far away. Down the left field and right field line in most modern baseball stadiums, you're looking at, like, Yankee Stadium has the short porch in right field. It's 314 feet. There's a couple that are a little bit shorter, but most of them are in, like, the 320s to 350s. And then, you know, baseball diamond is shaped, or a stadium is shaped the way it is. And it, by the time you get to dead center field, it's deeper, right? Makes sense. The wonderful thing about the polo grounds is that because it was a polo field that they converted to play baseball on, it was, you know, a rectangle. So the left field and right field lines at the polo grounds were 253 feet away, which you and I could go out there and hit home runs to left and to right all day long. That is not very far at all. Making a lot of assumptions here. (laughs) No, I mean, you would... By accident, you would run into one and be like, oh, <laughs> shit, I hit a home run. Awesome. <laughs> like, it's that close. 253 feet is is not... It's not even a full football field. Like, it's ridiculous. Dead center field in the polo grounds is 483 feet. It is absurd. <laughs> it is an absurd place... To play baseball, it is nothing but ins- cheap home runs to left and right, and inside the park home runs if it gets over the outfielder's head because th- it's just gone. It just <laughs> rolls forever. And the uh, the reward for this one, getting up to twenty five victories, the reward for this was a Jason Dominguez card. He is we talked about him a couple weeks ago, the Yankees prospect who hasn't played a game yet, but his autographs are selling for thousands of dollars. He is his nickname is the Martian. This kid is is everything you could possibly want in a prospect. He's amazing. So his card in the game is like, well, we're just gonna I mean, we're making this shit up as we go anyway, so we're just gonna make this card up. And it's now like the best center fielder in the game. So it was like, all right, you need to get to twenty five wins. Was the son of a bitch, I'm getting to twenty five wins. And I did. It was awesome. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> This has been baseball. <laughs> 483 feet, feet to dead center, Chris. That is absurd. You can't hit one out there. <laughs> you can't. I mean, I, 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 I believe you. But, like, not only is it 483 feet to, to dead center, but it is the, the shape of the outfield... Like, the shape of the playing field is basically an elongated home plate. So, like, it's 483 feet in the furthest part of left field, but it's only 253 feet in the shortest part of left field because it's just a straight fucking line from the end, from one corner to the other. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Well, Just saying, yeah, I like baseball, Chris. That, that, last, that last sentence, it was a lot of fun. That's all yeah. that really mattered. That's all that really matters, right? At the end of the day, yeah. I just hope that both teams had fun. Really, I don't care who won. Did everybody get orange slices after the game? Good. I love orange slices. That's all that matters. I carved into a great watermelon tonight. Did you? Pretty excited to eat that. Have you done the salt on the watermelon yet, or are you still just like, like, no, dude, I'm not doing that shit? No. Even I've, though you told me you would. I fucked around with it. It was all right. Did you? It was fine. It's amazing. Fine. How fucking dare you? How I mean, very dare you? I, I, sorry. Just regular good watermelon is perfect as is. I I I don't see any need. I don't see any need to augment it. No, damn it. You like the things that I like in the same way that I do. That's what this relationship <laughs> is based on. What's that Bosco chocolate syrup or something you were talking about? Bosco. Eat Bosco-ian. all the dicks. What, it's what you it? bet. You bet. How there fucking it is. dare you? Sorry. Real good. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you so much. Give me the cabinet back. We didn't mean it. Fuck your birthday. <laughs> oh, goodness. I think that's it. 
I think that's all I had. I know I just jumped right in at the end of your uh, story. No, that's okay. Uh, Mario I Kart thought it was Live a good jumping on, on point, though. 75 bucks. What, mm. 75 bucks? Mario Kart Live is on sale for 75 bucks. No, a little too much. No, for the RC car and the game and everything? Oh, yeah. Well, I suppose if it's all that. Yeah. So it's. It's that's not. I wanted to get John. Well, since I was going to get John the Bowser. Lego Bowser thing for Christmas, but then you know my sister in law bought that for me for my birthday, and we did that, and that was a lot of fun. It was awesome. That's awesome. Um, the but yeah, now I'm like, all right, well, Mario Kart Live was next on his list. Like he's gonna have a friggin' ball with that. So I don't know if I should get it now. But oh, real quick before we go to break, uh, today is the, the day we're recording. July fifth is the twenty fifth anniversary of uh, Nights into Dreams for Sega Saturn, and we have so much planned for that because we're so good at this. What could you possibly do? <laughs> There's I, two I, nights games and a like a pinball stream? table. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I love nights. Don't get me wrong, but like, there's not a lot of nights out there to to to, to celebrate. I just wanted to you know call out a happy birthday to nights because uh, you know it's cool. We're gonna record a wave back episode on it. That's there you go. That's all that matters. Yeah, that's you do Stone that Age Gamer Podcast adjacent. So. <laughs> Here, here's an important question, Chris, before right. we go to break. Okay. I want, I want to know your opinion on this. Okay. All right. I'm ready. I'm ready. So, um, I lied to my wife, and <laughs> so, isn't it great when we start stories that way? <laughs> I told her, because I didn't realize. Um, I re- it, it wasn't, like, nefarious. I was just covering up my own stupidity. Um, <laughs> when I went to buy um, Avenging Spirit on the 3DS eShop, uh-huh. I didn't realize that there was a put just the amount of money you need on there button. <laughs> so I told her I had to put $10. Okay. So I have $6.74 left over on my account right now because Avenging Spirit was not $10. It was definitely not. So do I get the Game Boy Mega Man 5? Or of myths and monsters. Uh oh boy. Um That's a big question, right? It is a big question. Um and those are uh Well they're what, three dollars a piece, right? Uh I think three ninety nine and two ninety nine. I don't think I can get both with what I have. I mean, you can if you throw in like the extra dollar you need. Well, I know, but remember, then I would have to admit need... that I lied. Oh, right. Then you have to admit that you lied. Uh, if you had to buy one, I mean, Mega Man 5 is a pretty unique thing, you know? I mean, you've played them both before, I take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you just I have, have them both emulated. I'm yeah. just... I suppose, I guess, I'm just asking which do you think would be better to have the authentic experience with versus using my PS4 controller? On my computer, which is what I'm doing for everything else. Uh, you know what? Probably Kid Icarus, because Mega Man's a lot more... You know, you kind of want more of a controller when playing Mega Man 5. Yeah, you know, right. It's a lot more intensive, uh, you know, shifting back and forth and, you know, button mashing, whereas Kid Icarus of Mr. Monsters is not a lot of, uh, you know, rapid firing. So I would say go for go for Kid Icarus on there. That was my thought. I just wanted to know where where you stood. I just looked. They're both three ninety nine. so... A steal. I mean, absolutely. So, all right. Fuck it. Kid Icarus it is. Yay. Yeah. All right. Well, then uh, let's take ourselves a break. And uh, when we come back, we're going to do a summer series. Uh, we're going to talk about Avenging Spirit, of which I have a few thoughts. Uh, you're listening to the Stony Camera Podcast. Stick around. And now, here's a quick look at some of the other original content, available now from our partners and Geekade.com. First up, we all know how much I want to have sex with Ferg. <laughs> <laughs> Not even a question. All of you also want to have sex with Ferg. Everyone. Everyone loves Ferg, including Evan, Karen, Angie, and Chris of this week's episode. 
Chris especially. It's gross. He showed me like fanfic. It's weird. So when he made a listener request, you better believe they listened. And so a show called Danger 5 was viewed. And to call it memorable would be an understatement. There were Zeppelins stealing national monuments, Hitler's dog, a man with an eagle's head, dancing, drink recipes, and more. But did it all work? Find out in this week's episode, episode 234, The Owls Got Stuff to Move. Have you seen this show? I have not, but before you say that, I just need to point out, because Hitler reminded me of it. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Katie likes to watch when I play video games. Uh And... I most since I'm mostly playing the show, there's two things that pop up. When your pitcher gets tired, it pops up at the top and it says pitcher is getting tired. And Katie was like, How the fuck does that say the pitcher is getting paid? And I was like, it doesn't say paid, Katie, it says tired. She was like, Oh, it was up on the screen or for what for like a half a second or whatever. So now she'll just be walking around and she'll be like, Oh man, the pitcher's really getting paid like before she goes to bed. <laughs> like, that's awesome. And then, in baseball, you know that they have a designated hitter, correct? (laughs) There it is. I was wondering where this was going. (laughs) She wondered why my team had a designated Hitler. (laughs) I was like, no, no, no. (laughs) Because she was so upset, too. Like, we're sitting on the couch, and they were like, now batting the designated hitter. And she turned to me and went, Dad, what are you doing? She was like, that's not funny. I said, I, what's not funny? She was like, a designated Hitler? Really? How old are you? I was like, first of all, fucker, that's hysterical. Second of all, it's <laughs> Hitler. <laughs> Try to tell me baseball's Nazi. Oh, it's hysterical. Anyway, designated Hitler. I have not seen this show. Should I see this show? I think you should. It's uh, Okay. It's magnificent. It's. Uh, I've never even heard of it. I had never heard of it before uh, Ferg mentioned it, and it's like, I, it defies description. Just, you know what, look at a trailer for it. Get Watch a trailer for Danger 5, and if that looks enticing to you, then that show is exactly what you want it to be. If that looks like not something that you want to watch, then it don't. <laughs> it's I not going to change your mind. It sounds like something I want to watch, and you know how much I love If Ferg was like, what really goes well on a cheese sandwich is some arsenic. I'd be like, man, I've heard bad things, but fucking Ferg said it, so I'm going to give it a shot. How much arsenic are we talking? Like a little bit? Like a sprinkle? A sousson of arsenic? I don't even know if that's correct. I'm not French. Anyway, I don't speak Russian. Next, the third episode of My Movie Podcast has arrived, and Paul, Sean, and myself decided to continue our alphabetical movie quest with the letter B. So we all chose Bill and Ted Face the Music, the unexpected threequel that survived years of development finally materialized, and it brought with it time travel, killer robots, and absolute insanity that you would expect from a Bill and Ted flick. But does it ultimately deliver? Don't miss a theater near you, episode three, Bill and Ted Face the Music. Yes, it delivers. I love that movie. I'm curious, man. I'm not a big Bill and Ted guy. Oh well, I don't. I don't think that's. You probably won't love the third one. No, sure. I mean, I don't think that's like a shocking revelation about me. I suppose not. I I I feel like. I feel like. See, I feel like you would like Bogus Journey more than more than me. Bogus Journey's got a lot of that weird, weird, almost horror movie shit going on in there. <laughs> you know, that weird stuff that you're into. You know, when they go to hell and there's a rabbit chasing them and stuff. Yeah, I mean, I do... <sighs> Man, I don't know. I, like... I'm curious, when was the last time you watched a Bill and Ted movie? Guy, 20 years ago? See, I, I think there might be something there for you. I'd be very curious to hear how you feel about those movies now. Because even as a fan, like watching them 20 years later was a pretty different experience for me. So, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe one day. Maybe one day I would give it a shot. I like Silly, you know? I, I mean, the fan first of one, Monty Python. The first one in particular is just has so many, so many fantastic lines, you know? Who is Joan of Arc? Noah's wife? <laughs> I mean, that's funny. 
This is good shit. I don't know. Tiff <laughs> Tiff showed me this shit the other day. She's been watching on YouTube fucking puppet history. And there's like this is a song every episode, and she was like, "You got to hear this song. It's fucking incredible." And it was about uh, the, like an ancient samurai Musashi, and like how he rode, like he slept in for his duel, and he was late, and the people who were rowing him to the battle. Like, he took one of the oars and carved that into a sword, and that's the sword he used to fucking win the duel and whatever. Like, all of that sounds right up my alley, right? That's some shit I should be into. But then these fucking puppets started singing, and I was like, no, hard pass. (laughs) Hard pass. Yeah, yeah. And I I was like... and I and I don't mean any offense by this, but I was like, that's like some MST3K shit, and I am just not about that life. Yeah, no, it's I th- not my I thing. You, I think you might dig. A, I, you definitely need to check out Danger Five, and I think you should watch Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure and see if you get anything out of it. I might. I'll, I'm gonna fucking just mainline all three of them right in a row. That's probably the best way to do it, right? <laughs> I mean, it really six is. hours. Well, I mean, I I did the first two in the same night. They're, they're only an hour and a half long, so... Yeah, I mean, I got I got three hours I can set aside for Bill and Ted. I think. I don't know. We'll see. All right, well, then... Fuck all that noise. Finally, Chris. <laughs> finally. Finally. Uh, finally. <laughs> finally. Radio Free Rhea is back. <laughs> the Outer Space Narrative comedy podcast about a handful of people stranded on Mars with little other than a radio show to keep them sane, continues with an all-new episode. Ren Lawson joins the show once again, but why is he still here? What has he been doing? Doesn't he have things at home he needs to get back to? Uh, Holly speaks to Ren, as well as some other colorful colony residents in Radio Free Rhea Episode 2, A Hundred Million Miles. Coincidentally, how far I've walked. Not 500. Oh. What was that? Uh, Natalie and Brulia, huh? And even that was even that wasn't 100 million miles. Anyway, for all this great content and more from us and our partners, be sure to keep your eyes on geekade.com. And we're back. It is the first uh, first installment of the 2021 Stone Age Gamer Summer Series, uh, where we uh, go back and look at important games that we missed and uh, play them and then talk about them. And we decided last week that this week we'd be talking about Avenging Spirit. This is a game that was published by Jalico as an arcade game in 1991, and then it was ported to the Game Boy in 1992. The Game Boy version hit the 3DS Virtual Console in 2011, and that's pretty much the only time it's ever been ported. Which is Uh, crazy, right? I mean, I guess. I mean, I can tell why there's there's, there's no secret why this game did not do well in the United States. Like, sure. This is a hidden gem if there was ever a hidden gem because I mean have you seen the box art? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. The uh it does not match the game and yet it kind of does. Sort of? It's, it's sort of, but also no. But even like I don't know. This is a weird game. It's a cool game though. It's like a it's like if Geist or for GameCube was adorable and on the GameCube and on the Game Boy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I I'm, I'm just going to come right out and say it. Um, because I mentioned it last week, and that, that's ultimately why we picked this game, was because we brought it up doing the uh, the Stone Age Starter Kit, and I was like, you know, this is a game that I come to much later, and blah, 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 and I don't, you know, I had never finished it, and I was like, fuck it, let's do this one. And man, I really like this game. Yeah, I, I definitely I really it. do. I had a good like, time with it. I did, uh, I did what you did. I bought it on Virtual Console. Like, I went upstairs, and I busted out the old 3ds and i downloaded it on the virtual console and i played it for uh i got a few levels in on my first night and i was like this is a really neat game this is this is actually really cool it controls well Mm -hmm. it looks great it does it does look great um and I'll actually get. I didn't finish that. I told Dan earlier. I didn't finish the Game Boy version. Uh, but the next day, I had a little bit of spare time, uh, so I went down to my fancy new arcade cabinet and I 
played the arcade version of the game. Uh, and this Game Boy port, not only does it look good on its own, but it is an incredibly faithful port of this arcade game. It really, really is. I mean, obviously it's missing background detail and shit, like, because I played, I played, I did the opposite of you. I finished the Game Boy one and played through about half of the arcade one. Okay. Um, and I was like, oh, that's what this was. Yeah, like there's, it was really interesting to me to go back and then replay that first uh, level or two of the Game Boy one after playing the arcade one. Because it's like some things that were weird to me had a little bit more clarity. Right. Uh, and like, you know, some things are a little bit more obvious because you've got, you know, larger sprites to work with and more color. But like, I liked the old baseball dudes. Those were, they, those guys were great. Yeah, those um, were awesome. And what's super cool is like, so, so you play as this ghost, right? And, the cinematic sequences also are almost one to one minus the black and white thing. That's really wild. And all the text is exactly the same. Yeah, uh, that was so wild. Like, some scientist dude's daughter gets kidnapped by the mob or ninjas or ninja mobs or whatever. Uh, or the nineties, something like that. Yeah. Because everybody's out to kill you and they have nothing to do with one another. No, <laughs> like, all the enemies are like, completely different uh but then the so the scientist guy turns to this ghost that he has in a jar and he's like i know you can't survive much on your own but you got to help me get my daughter back and the ghost's like sure sign me the fuck up so you float around <laughs> I'm as in. this ghost yeah i'm in sign where do i sign i can't hold a pen i'm a ghost i can't <laughs> i'm just, i'm nodding i'm nodding yes i'm in so like you float around as this spirit and as you're floating around as a spirit, you're constantly losing health. You can't survive outside of possessing somebody, but then you can possess any enemy on the screen. And then that enemy has its own life bar, and once that life bar is toast, that also comes out of your life bar, but as long as you still have energy left, then that enemy dies, and you have to float over to somebody else before you die. And you just gotta keep that train, that possession train going. And it's every single character plays like super different, which is so, wild. so different. Like I mentioned the baseball guy, and at first I thought he kind of sucked, but I, I possessed him right before the, the, the snake boss. And yeah. the snake boss in the arcade version, the stuff that he spits at you is a lot larger. Okay. And with the baseball dude, you can actually bat his projectiles back at him and it kills him super fast. Oh, that's awesome. Almost like super... a Mega Man kind of thing. Yeah, like I totally, I, 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 that was a total accident that I was there was there because I was you know beating him with the bat and it's doing no damage, and then like I was you know I accidentally pressed the wrong button to jump and he swings his bat and it hits this projectile back. It was like, oh, that is cool, and that's, that's like dope. that guy's right before the boss. So, um, as far as I know, you can't just like unpossess somebody, right? You have to wait until you, that person dies. You can in the Game Boy version. Hmm. Like I There's was, no instructions I was hitting, on the, the arcade version, so I didn't. Yeah, I didn't try. How, how do you do it? I was. Uh, if you hit Y on the the 3DS, Which you is, could. I you, think select for the maybe. I don't know. You jump. You you leave the body, and you can go float around to whoever you want. Because you're right. They the characters. The only one that sucks, right, was the vampire. Vampire. Fucking. <laughs> I hated that one. Um, yeah, the vampire did suck. And, like, no ultimately, like any good platforming action game of the late 80s, early 90s, you really kind of want to be the ninja. Yeah. There's a red ninja and a blue ninja, and if you could be either one of those, the red ninja, I found, was really, really good against the uh, the sewer slime boss. That was the one with the chain, right? Yeah. The red, yeah, yeah. I liked the red ninja a lot. So he's got, like, a chain whip, and the blue ninja has uh, shuriken that you throw... And then there's there's like a hipster rocker chick that one of them when she kicks sends out like a fucking sonic boom yeah like a shockwave things yeah like a little energy wave there's a couple different mobsters there's like a fire breathing dragon there's the fire a, breathing a, dragon I found was also not very useful yeah I really, really wanted slow. to like the dragons like oh I get to be a dragon this is uh, this actually isn't all that cool <laughs> the uh, I I found the uh, the very uh, racially insensitive Indian man um, to be very good. I was going to say that was my favorite to use was the, the floating Indian guy because you could just fly. Yeah, he was awesome. That was that was really cool. The uh, it's I'm I, I was so impressed playing through this game all the way through 
about how they were able to cram so much variety into a relatively simple and short game. Yeah, you're right. There wasn't a lot. There wasn't a ton to it. Now, also, when I beat the game, I didn't get the good ending. Oh, no. I didn't find the third key. Oh, the the you find the super overpowered chick at the end. That was awesome. Yeah, I so so like I said I finished the uh, I I didn't finish the Game Boy one, but I watched a playthrough of it because I was like, all right, where the hell was that third key? Because I just didn't I didn't see it, uh, and then I you know, I saw them get. It. I was like, okay, all right, it was in that place that I was kind of just kind of meandering around. Yeah. Whatever. When I opened the door, when I went to open the door, and they're like, you don't have the key. It's like, all right, well, I guess the key's past the door then. And then I fought the last boss. It's like, well, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. All I'm right. I'm do this again, but all right. Uh, but yeah, you unlock the, the girl that you rescued, and she's like super strong. That's kind of awesome. Yeah, it was awesome. She has like a fucking crazy laser pistol. Yeah, that's <laughs> Just, awesome. I think it took me like five or six shots to beat the last boss. It took me a while to beat the last boss. Now, granted, I was playing, like I said, the arcade one. I have effectively infinite quarters, so I just kept continuing over and over again. But I think the game would have cost me like 30 bucks to beat. (laughs) It is not a $30 game. I will will say that much. No, but you know what? It would have been back in the day. If I had dropped 30 bucks on this as a Game Boy game back in the day, I would have felt pretty good about that. This is a really solid game. I, I, I really fucking loved it. I really honestly did. What was really tripping me up, though, as I was watching the uh, the arcade playthrough, because the music is really good, but on I thought anyway, on the Game yeah, Boy no, version, the music's really good. On the Game Boy version, there's not as many tracks. It doesn't change as much as the the arcade version. Yeah, and I think it was the second or third level in the. I'm pretty sure it's the second level in the arcade version. There's a breakdown in the song, and I was like, "That, that is almost note for note, the like a chorus part of an '80s song." And I can't. I was sitting here; it was driving, and I was like, "Death, get in here before I break something." <laughs> <laughs> and like, I played, I played it for her, and she was like. Fuck, I hate you so much, because I know what you're talking about, and I can't think of it either. And eventually we came to it, and in the one section of it, there's the little breakdown of uh, Banana Rama's cu- Cruel Summer, <laughs> where it does, it's a cruel, cruel summer, that do-do-do, that, that little fucking, that little break is in this game. Like, it doesn't go all the way through the do-do-do-do-do-do-do, that part, but like, <laughs> Right fucking before that in the song, that is in there. And I was like, oh my god, this is insanity. It's driving me nuts. <laughs> I'm so angry. I was just sitting here like, what is that song? I think like a chick sings it. And Tiff was like, I think you're bright and I hate you so much for making me think about this right now. Wow. I, I That never even occurred to me while yeah. I was listening to it. Definitely has a cruel summer ripoff. I did very much enjoy the soundtrack, though. It was really cool. It was really, really good. It struck me immediately the, when playing the Game Boy one, uh, and the arcade, arcade stuff's stuff. really good, too. And like you said, there's more of it, but the, the, the tunes themselves, everything about this port to Game Boy is, is super impressive, and it just makes me question, like, what the, what the hell happened when marketing this game? Right? Like, I understand like, the idea of, like, you have this cutesy ghost and kind of an odd art style, like... That kind of that kind of shit sold on Game Boy well enough here in America, sure. but I can understand wanting to at least redesign it a little bit for American audiences. But why you would put like a 1930s gangster on the front shooting a Tommy gun? Yeah, and, and that's it. And that's it. When you got fire breathing dragons and ninjas and hipster chicks and like weird snowball chicks and fucking wizards. I mean, and, they probably should have tried to come up with a better name. Like, Avenging Spirit is a cool ga- a cool name, but it's not a great descriptor, I think, for exactly what this game is. It sounds way tougher than what this game is. Exactly. It's it's kind of it's not a great match, and uh, yeah, it's 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 a weird situation. I feel like if this was marketed differently. It probably would have had a pretty decent chance of like 
doing well because it's such a cool concept. And yeah, this was well, and yeah. and like what's crazy too is that like this only coming out on the Game Boy, right? If this came out on the NES at the same time, it would have been a crit. Like we'd be talking little Samson numbers. Oh, you're you're not you're not wrong. No, absolutely. If this was if this was an NES game. Uh, or even an early Super Nintendo game or a Genesis game. Like, yeah, this is 1990. Uh, it came out in 92. So, like, Super Nintendo was totally an option, and so was the Genesis. How yeah. Turbo Graphics was an option. How is Game Boy the only place that got this? It's so weird. It's uh, The Game Boy cart is incredibly expensive. But, I mean, th this really would have been, like, one of those late, like you're saying, early Super Nintendo, early Genesis, late Nintendo. I mean, this would have been the most expensive game ever released because it, it's awesome. It's it really awesome. good and nobody played it. It's really weird to me that this was the platform that they thought this was the best fit for. Yeah. I mean, maybe it was the cheapest, w the cheapest one to port it to. And we're, you know, we are talking Jalico, but man, they put, they put stuff everywhere. Like they Jalico did. was all over the map. Like, so how come there's a Super Nintendo version of "Hey Punk, Are You Tough Enough"? Uh, yeah, and yet right? Legend of Spirit was relegated to the Game Boy. Like, it's, such it's, a weird choice. Yeah, that's weird. I, but I was thinking the same thing. I'm playing the arcade version after playing the uh, Game Boy version and thinking, like, I mean, I guess I can kind of sort of understand why, and not even it's not even a guess. I can completely understand why this didn't take off. Like, no oh, question. Sure. This is a weird game, but it's not a weird. It's not that weird of a concept to wrap your head around, especially not when you like give it a clever name and some cool box art, and you're. You, it's an entirely different story, a, just a um, completely different story. Hundred percent. You could have just made it about the ghost, Blepo the ghost, and you're like, all right, sweet, I'm in. Yeah, like Call I, it ghost. <laughs> yeah, I, ghost. Hunter, ghost. This should have been fucking like ghost detective. They should have called it dress to possess. Oh my god, dress to possess. I'm in. I'm 100 percent in. This game is fucking awesome. And if you've never played it, I can wholeheartedly, full throatedly, even like a fucking warbler. Um, what? <laughs> rec recommend this game at 3.99 on your 3ds. Yeah. Three dollars and ninety nine cents on the three DS eShop. It is available now. Uh, you know, there's also nefarious means, obviously. But uh, even if you just want to go the legit route, buy this game on your three DS. It's a great place to play it. It plays wonderfully. Uh, it's it is a it's this is a really cool game. This was an excellent pick. Yeah, I I I was so so pleased playing through it because it is it it's challenging just enough. Right there's there's a bit of backtracking through some of the levels to figure out some of the puzzle elements, finding the right enemy to possess to fight the particular bosses is a little bit more trial and error than it should be, but there really wasn't any way to communicate that. You know mm -hmm. why does the red ninja really fuck up the sewer monster? I don't know. It just does. So <laughs> you know do that one. Um, you know, but uh, yeah, like just a really really solid solid action game. Yeah. <laughs> very very happy like i said i remembered liking it you know 10 years ago or whatever when i was first you know delving into emulation and whatnot and being like oh this is kind of a cool little game this ghost is adorable this is a weird story i can possess people awesome all right i got nine million other games to play through <laughs> you know like which is inherently the problem with emulation if you download a file and it's like well here's every game ever okay sure you know, it yeah. takes a little while to get through some of that shit, but this one definitely, definitely worth it. And I, I, I really would recommend dropping the three ninety nine and just like let's play this on the uh, the three DS. Still not the most comfortable system in the world to hold, but no, especially not if you're tossing on a Circle Pad Pro XL. Yeah, no, that doesn't because like I, I still I have the uh, the new three DS XL with the little the nubby do, mm -hmm. and uh, at, at, like. I find myself getting through about 10, 15 minutes and being like, man, I wish I had some grips on this thing. <laughs> you know? It just, it's just not a very comfortable system to hold, I don't think. Nah, I agree. As far but, as handhelds go, it's, you know, for its, especially for its time, but, you know, we're living in the world where the Switch is a thing, and even that's, you know, not the, the, the most comfy thing for everybody in the world, but I find the Switch 
infinitely more playable than I ever never did my 3DS. So I I feel like I need like two pop sockets on the back of this thing <laughs> to like hold it. You know what I mean? I really do. I don't know. Anyway, anyway. play Avenging Spirit. Yeah, solid solid win. Go team, Avenging Spirit. Man, I'm so good at picking games, Chris. You are. So where do we go from here? What's what's the next process for the summer series? Because I don't know if I can get through a game a week. No, I don't. I don't think we have. I don't think we have room for a game a week, right? Because next week is um, the fuck is next week? Didn't we have something? Uh, I don't think so. Okay, next week we're just gonna uh, talk about lawn care. I think is next week. We well, talked about see, home improvement in, this week. We're in July. I had it. I had an idea. We should totally do this live on the show. We should. Um, let me uh, let me double check something real quick. I'm just gonna figure out a date here. Uh, ba ba ba. Yeah. Uh, so July 9th, 1981, uh, was the initial release of Donkey Kong. So uh, it would be pretty cool next week, because July 9th, the day that this podcast comes out, will be the actual, you know, uh, birth date. But then we will record on the 12th. We should rank all the Donkey Kong games. Yeah, that's what we were going to do. I knew there was something. Yes, we totally had that planned. No, we did. We did? Didn't we? I don't think so. I know we planned to do it for Metroid in August, but I... I'd... I thought we had talked about the Donkey Kong one. No, we totally did. We're fucking great at this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Obviously, there are some ground rules to figure out. I don't know exactly what, what we mean by rank all the Donkey Kong games, because Donkey Kong is a weird-ass franchise. But, you know, we'll figure it that is. shit and out. It is, and how do you rank the original Donkey Kong against Donkey Kong Country? I don't know. Tune in next week when we fucking do. Yeah, we'll figure that shit out. <laughs> all right, well, I guess that, that wraps it up, huh? We're all Sold. good? What we a good it. show. Nah, you yes. guys, are, I mean... An hour and 44, and this even, I mean, Evan's going to cut out so much of the, the break conversation, because that's old depressive shit you don't, you guys don't want to hear. Yeah. I, you fucking hour and a half of just pure gold. This <laughs> <laughs> is awesome. Keep it I, feel, I actually, I almost feel like we're cheating them a little bit this week, Chris. Yeah, well, I mean, we've had a lot of long episodes lately, like a lot oh. of long ones, so. We are, we're like the kings of foreplay. It's like this should only take ten minutes because we're in our forties now. But no, I'm making this shit an hour. I want you to know I love you. <laughs> See, I imagine you're talking to Ferg that whole time. I, how did you know? <laughs> I was just reading your script. Ferg, love I didn't Ferg write so that. Much. I didn't write that. <laughs> no, you know, Ferg. Look, you don't even want to know. It is raunchy. It is like, like Skinamax after dark raunchy, bad. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake! Uh, <laughs> that's our show, everybody. Join us next week for some old bullshit. Uh, <laughs> join us next week when apparently we're gonna celebrate Donkey Kong's 40th anniversary by uh, God damn. ranking all the Donkey Kong games. But we do have to decide what our next summer series game is, right? Yeah, we'll put up. Uh, Look, let's put up a poll on the uh, Discord. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do some sort of poll on the Discord. That's where we're gonna that's where we're gonna keep this playing on the Discord. I think, right? Yeah. Do we want to throw it on all the social channels? We're just eh, fuck the rest of them. <laughs> I don't Ouch. know. Now nah, we'll do it on the Facebook page as well. All right, Stone we, Age either, Gamer I mean, Facebook I'm, page. I'm, I'm not against I'm not. just putting it on the Discord because that's way less work and one less thing to keep track of. So sure, I don't know. Let's just do it. Let's just do it on Discord. Oh, can we put it on Getter? Do you know what I Getter don't know is? What that is? That's the uh, it's the new uh, right wing free speech um, uh, platform that's launched that has been taken over by people posting Sonic the Hedgehog porn. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking great. The the Sonic the Hedgehog fans like people who became furries because of Sonic. I love all of you so much. If any of you who listen to this show are part of that group, I fucking love and respect you so much because you guys saw this opportunity and you were like, it's our time to fucking shine. And like, it just went hard core. It's like all these crazy, like, I mean, just 
batshit conspiracy theory nut jobs on uh, like whatever side of the aisle they're from are all like flocking to this because this was going to be Trump's new platform of choice and then just a bunch of fucking weird Twitter and crazy left leaning communist motherfuckers were like we're going to do nothing but sonic porn it's great <laughs> that's so funny De- don't fuck with the internet man no <laughs> like, it, was, a- it is a terrible place most of the time but if they decide to band together for good you are fucked <laughs> Well, uh, we're not going to top that, so... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so join us on Getter, I suppose. Yeah, and, and you know, h- hop on the Discord and vote in our next Summer Series poll. Uh, and speaking of which, we are on most social media platforms, and if you want to get in touch with us, we aren't very difficult to find. All it takes is a quick look at our show notes, and you'll see links to our social media accounts, as well as all manner of other fun stuff, like a link to our namesakes, StoneAgeGamer.com, the Geekade Patreon, which helps keep this show running week after week, and more useful links than you can shake a joystick at. This show's theme song, Squared Roots, was written by Banjo Guy Ali. You can learn all about his wonderful music and more by following the link to his YouTube channel, also in the show notes. And finally, as always, we'd like to thank our intrepid editor, Evan, for making the show listenable for all you folks. And we'd like to thank all you folks for listening in the first place. And speaking of Banjo Guy Ali, one good thing, one truly good thing did happen last week. I said a while ago that I commissioned Ali to do a bunch of Metroid songs. Right. He got me the, th- he sent me the third one, which is the Surface of SR388. Nice. For Metroid 2, and he absolutely nailed it. I've listened to it like 150 times. It's incredible. He's going to release it on his regular channel, too, like just even before I use it in my video, because it's like, this is too good. Share it with the world. It's too, <laughs> it's too good. It's so good. So look forward to that. Anyway, uh, that's it. We're going to we're gonna call it a night. Uh, on behalf of Dan and myself, keep playing games. <laughs>